Thank you for joining me today. So um, I'm going to show you how I'm going to shorten this sleeve. So I did knit this cardigan. It's a friend of mine knitted it. Um, it's a lovely Noro uh, silk garden. Very nice yarn. Um, but the sleeve is too long and it's stretched a bit with time and it's also quite floppy. And she doesn't like long sleeves. And because this sleeve is quite wide and quite floppy, it's a four by four rib, which doesn't really pull it in enough. It's um, she's not actually very happy with it and she's not wearing it because she's the sleeves just always fall down and get in away. So she asked if I could shorten it for her. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I get a lot of questions about this. So I thought I might as well record a tutorial as, we, as I'm doing it. So this is where she wants the final sleeve length to be where I put that marker. And I'm actually going to do a few rows. I'm actually going to do a few rounds in a... Um, rib I haven't decided whether to do this rib or a two by two rib um, the thing is I'm quite fuzzy about it flowing into the existing pattern so um, I need to think about that a little bit how I'm going to do that but I'm going to do it on a smaller needle to, pu to pull it in a bit so that's the final length she wants this I need to take it off a little bit before that I'm thinking I'll probably do about five or six rounds of rib I don't think she wants loads of rounds of rib so um I think that's what I'll do. So when you start doing this, so this is a sleeve that's been uh, knitted, um, it's been seamed. Uh, so what you need to do before you start is really see if you can undo that seam, um, which I'm going to leave for now. So to do this, you need some needles. Now I recommend using a slightly smaller needle size than what you actually knitted the pattern in. And then you need some scissors sharp scissors and I know taking your scissors to your knitting is scary uh, but it's fine it's not going to all unravel if you're careful okay so even though the seam is where's the seam you see I actually sewed this off for her and I've done a really good job because I can't find it oh, the seam is here so I'm going to take that marker off actually because it's just where the color changes so I'm going to take that off. Actually, before I do that, I'm just realised I haven't actually counted how many rows I'm chopping off. So um, take that off. I'm going to find out where the seam is. Now, if you want to, you can actually undo the seam before you start cutting. But um, I, I'm not going to do that, I don't think. So that's the final length that she wants it to be. So I want to go about five rows above that. So one, two, three, four, five. So that's about where I want to cut. And I'm just going to very quickly count how many rounds. Hang on, let's do. To make it slightly easier to count, let's just go over and put that in the actual knit section of the rib rather than the pearl section. Then I'm just quickly going to count how many rounds I'm chopping off just so I can do the exactly the same thing on the second sleeve. So, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 21, 22. So, 22 rows is what I'm going to be chopping off, and then I know that for the next one. So, there's no easy way to do this you just get your scissors into the stitch and chop just trying to wonder I'm going to see if I can undo a bit of this seam first so to undo this seam you've got to find out where the um, yarn sewing it up is and I think it is that thread there I'm not 100% sure so let's see what happens there we go yes I got the right thread good that is excellent I actually sewed this up in a different yarn um, because Nora Silk Garden is a sort of single yarn, single ply yarn or singles yarn. It um, When you're sewing up, it's also a bit sort of thick and thin. And when you're sewing up, it slightly untwists and it doesn't have a lot of twist in it anyway. So it's very easy to, for it to start pulling apart as you're doing mattress stitch. So I actually used a different um, yarn in just a very pale pink applied yarn to uh, sew it up with. So I'm just going to undo a few rows of that. Okay. It's always easier if you can actually cut at the edge of the fabric. If you knitted something in the round, then you can just cut anywhere. But if you knitted it back and forth, then if you cut at the edge, 
that's easier now because this is a uh, pearl and I've actually put the marker here in the knit stitch I'm not going to go and try and find that row because it's not that I don't find it that easy when it's pearl so I'm just going to just cut that knit stitch okay so this is what you do put your needle in and cut and I know that's scary I'm going to take that marker out as well and then get your knitting needles and you've got a little bit of a hole there which I know is scary but and then what you're going to do you're going to grab one of the ends so I'm going to go just do this section first you're going to grab can you see that little end there you're going to undo that end now the key thing is not to pull out your fabric too much as you're doing this so that's the first live stitch is um left me and that's the second stitch so you're just going to follow if you just unpick that that end pull on it and as you unpick it, you can just see which stitch is going through next. Now, if you're worried about doing this, if you have to do this on a real garment, oh, that's the wrong stitch actually, and you're worried about doing it, practice first. Just knit a swatch and do it on the swatch. It doesn't have to be a sleeve, or it can just be like a stocking stitch swatch or rib swatch. If you're doing something in a pattern, do it in the same color as the same um, stitch pattern as the pattern. Okay, so I'm going to pull this one, undo it, then it's going through the stitch that I have got on my needle. So that's the next stitch. It's a little bit easier now because this thread is getting a bit longer. So you just need to follow that around. So the next stitch that this thread is, I'm just trying to hold that needle out of the way a bit, hang on. The next stitch that this thread is going through is this stitch here. So I'm going to go through that stitch next, pull the th yarn through, then it's going to go through, I'm not worried about these stitches up here because we're not. that's the bit we're getting rid of. Then it goes through the stitch that I've picked up again. So you have two chances to catch each stitch. So, you know, it's nothing scary really. because You have two goes at each, each, uh, each stitch. I don't know why I find stitch a difficult word to say. Um, okay, and I think that might be the last one on that side there we go oh no one more stitch there is that no oh that's the last one okay so i got those few stitches there and then i'm going to carry on in the other direction so i'm going to just pull the needle all the way through this is the advantage of circular needles guys they're basically double pointed so i'm not going to carry on in the other direction um so that's where the yarn is and it's going through that stitch next. So I'm going to put the needle through there and you've just got to follow the yarn um, along. If you've ever undone a, um, a, what's it called? If you've ever undone a afterthought heel or thumb, it's the same principle except when you do an afterthought heel or thumb, you have to catch the stitches on both sides. You don't on this one, so it's easier. You just have to worry about these stitches on, on this side. Okay, so that's the next stitch that my needle, my yarn is going through. So I'm going to pull that one out. And then that's the next stitch. There we go. And that's the next one. So it goes through each stitch twice. So that's the first one. That's that stitch. And then I pull it on. there. And then it pulls through that stitch again. So you have two goes at catching each, each uh, stitch. So um, it's not really as bad as scary as it looks. Always make sure you go a few rows above where you want to finish. Um, unless you're going to just cut it and pick it and then cast off straight away. If you want to knit on any kind of edging, um, then you want to go a few rows or how many rows of edging you're going to knit on above where you want the sleeve to finish. If you find the stitch a bit difficult to actually get your needle into, if you pull out a bit of the yarn that goes through the stitch, 
if you pull that bit either side of the stitch and then just pull on it can you see how that kind of opens up the stitch and then you can just pop your needle in so this is not too scary is it okay so you're going through that stitch again right i'm going to um switch my camera off in a second and i'm gonna finish doing this because there's quite a lot of stitches and it's probably a little bit boring to watch me do every single one so i'm going to do one more and then i'm going to show you what it looks like when i finished so i've now cut off a section on both sleeves i've done about 20 rows uh, and I picked up all the stitches after I cut it off and I have knitted about five rounds of a new edging. Now, I just want to point out one little tiny problem with this method. These sleeves work from the bottom up. So they work in that direction. Because I have to shorten the sleeves, I had to unpick one round to cut off 20 rounds worth of rows. I then knitted the edging that way. Now, when you are doing this, the stitches that you pick up here are not actually the stitches that you knitted in the opposite direction. It's the loops between those stitches. So if you are doing stocking stitch and you have a rib and you cut off the rib um, and then whatever, however much of a stocking stitch you need to, and then re-knit it, then that's fine. Um, you won't have this problem if you re-knit the rib. Hang on, let me just change the... So my light set, light is a little bit funny today because it's sunny and I can't um, do much about that. So I do apologize if the light is a bit funny. So because this is knitted in four by four rib, that was knitted that way, and I picked it up and knitting it that way, the rib, you can see, is actually out by half a stitch. Now, I did consider decreasing and making the rib three by three, but I was worried that might be a little bit too tight. Um, what I did was actually re knitted the rib on a slightly smaller needle because I know that my friend thought it was a little bit too wide. So I knitted it on um, slightly smaller needles. Um, <clears throat> so, but you can see it is out by uh, one, half a stitch. So I'm going to uh, take this to her this morning. I haven't cast off because I want to check the length. So once I know the length is okay, I will then cast off and then I will um, sew up this seam the remaining of this seam again. Now I will check that my friend is happy with the way it looks. Um, if she isn't, then I will go back to, uh, I will unpick what I've knitted and de probably decrease to make it into three by three. Um, I will try and get a picture. I'm actually seeing my friend today, so I'm gonna give this to her today. Um, and I'm going to finish this in the pub where we're meeting for lunch. If I can get a picture of it once I've finished it, then I will. But because we're in a pub and I haven't been there before, I don't know how dark it is. So hopefully I'll get a, come back and get a picture to show you. But this is the result of picking up and re-knitting the rib. Um, if you are knitting a rib onto stocking stitch, then this won't be a problem. You can just knit a rib on. Uh, it's only when you knit a rib onto an existing rib. If you have any questions, just send me a message. Thank you for watching.